This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm super excited because I think they turned the corner here. They've got new directors. We're going to talk about that today. they got a new CFO. We're going to talk about that today. We're talking no other than Pet Vivo Holdings. They're based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. They are, are an emerging biomedical device company. They focus on licensing and commercialization of uh, innovative medical devices for pets and also pet therapeutics. And with us today is John Lai. They trade on the OTC markets. Ticker symbol P-E-T-V. John, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Everett. It's a pleasure to be on. You know, it's been a little while since uh, you've been on the show. Give me some of the latest developments and milestones since our last conversation. Sure. Um, we added Wes Hain to, to the team as CEO. He, his background is very strong in the medical device, medical uh, licensing and dealing with the human side of the market, as well as uh, Cindy Jenkins, the CFO, uh, because a uh, year and a half ago, two years, we had that issue with our audit firm losing their SEC certification. And, you know, we've been on catch up of trying to catch three years of re auditing. And, you know, it looks like we're finally there of being totally caught up. And I feel comfortable within 30 days, we'll be current and moving the project forward. Um, since then, we have had, you know, quite a few more success stories in injecting uh, both dogs and horses. As you know, our product has to deal with the treatment of osteoarthritis. Uh, the product's name is called Kush, and we compete in that market where we're quite different than the competitors. Competitors are focused on treating the symptom we're actually focused on treating the actual disease of bone-on-bone -bone contact by injecting our particles into any articulating joint. Yeah, that's a big market out there. You know, seven years, animals start having that problem, and I tell you, it's a huge market. Yes, uh, we're very excited about uh, getting real close to a commercial launch, and, you know, we've added a couple of really strong board members, uh, independent board members that have strong history in life science, biotech, as well as marketing and, and finance. You know, if you would, for my listeners, give us a little background on the two new directors, David Deming, I believe, and uh, Peter Vasmar. Yes, uh, they're both outside independent directors. Uh, David Deming is uh, CEO of a company called Wildfire 5G. It's really cool technology that launches high-speed internet to the uh, rural areas and his whole background has been uh, you know institutional asset management uh, and operating early stage companies and marketing and launching those companies uh, so he's been very successful with that kind of background and brings a lot to the board for us uh, from from his expertise in communications marketing and the life science area. Uh, Peter Vesmar, uh, he's out of Illinois, very uh, strong background in building startup companies to middle market. Um, he's back on his financial also, very strong in financial reporting, you know, audit committee type work, regulatory work. He sits on boards, he sat on NASDAQ board, company boards. Um, so uh, we believe both of these directors will be instrumental in helping us move the business forward as well as enter our product into the human market and helping with branding and marketing. Also, could you bring us up to date who your new CFO is? Maybe a little background. Yeah, Cindy Jenkins. Yeah, sure, sure. She's got, or she may be mad at me on this one, but close to 40 years of experience in the area of uh, accounting, uh, financial controls, She's a finance. She's been a financial principal of brokerage firms and three different firms. And as you know, how important it is to have the monthly focus reports done on time. She's never missed one. So we feel very comfortable that she's got the proper controls in place to allow us to be 
get current on our financial and stay current. One of the uh, events that have occurred since the last time we talked a year ago is we closed the transaction uh, on acquiring Geldell Technologies, the company with all the patents. There's 20 some patents. Uh, and so now we are in consolidated all the books. So it makes it much easier because before we had to use a method of accounting called VIE accounting. It's, it's an SEC term that requires you to consolidate the books, even though the acquisitions are done because there's a strong likelihood that it's going to be done. So we finally completed that uh, April, May of this year. So now we integrated a couple of accounting systems into one. So everything will run smoothly going forward. To my listeners, if you're looking for a biotech that's got a niche in the pet market, you might want to take a look at Pet Vivo Holdings. I believe they're about 30 to 90 days away from turning the corner and never looking back. With us today is the chairman of the company, John Lai. John, where are we at on the Cush, uh, your number one product usage, and, and, and when do you think revenues will start falling on the, the balance sheet? I feel we're definitely within 60 days. Well, over, this is, okay, let's say 90 days of a commercial launch date where we're going to be shipping the product to vets. So we're very excited. Uh, you know, keep an eye on our website and our social media sites as well as the news releases of a targeted launch date. We're, we're, we're very close. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a new facility that should be completed uh, probably right around the 1st of November. And then once that's established, we can set up uh, for commercial production. And then when you think the revenues will fall on the balance sheet, the first quarter of uh, 2018? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm very comfortable that we will start seeing revenues coming in uh, calendar first quarter of 2018. If I was listening to this interview and I'm thinking about buying your company, give me a reason why you think your stock is undervalued and why I should put my money into it. So if you look at us, we're a commercial ready company with no regulatory hurdles from the FDA standpoint on the animal health side. If you look at the comparable companies that are out there that are looking at treating symptoms versus treating the problem, those companies have valuations in the hundreds of millions. Um, I, I won't name any of the competitors, but they're, they're looking at masking the symptoms and we're looking at solving the problem. So when we commercially launch on a valuation basis, we're very attractive relative to those companies. And, and as Wall Street goes, it's all on relative comps. Absolutely. So, that, yep, so that's one reason. The other reason is we, we've been, our stock has come down significantly because of the audit uh, issue and the audit issue prevents people from purchasing the stock at a lot of the brokerage firms because we still have the stock sign out there when you look at OTC markets. But as stated before, we just finished filing a 10Q that has all the subsequent events to about two weeks ago. And it should make it easy for us to complete the 10K and have that on and I believe will be current in a very short period of time, and that restrictions get, gets removed where the retail consumer or the individual that's interested can buy the stock. Well, you know, you said it all. You said a lot. We've got new directors on our board. we got a new CFO. At least in 90 days, we should be out there having the product in commercial form, and by the first quarter, having revenues on the books. In closing, John, is there anything that we didn't get to uh, talk about that you would like to get out there? Yeah, well, one other thing is we did add a CEO in Wes Hain. He's a very seasoned person in taking companies from one or two employees, I think, to a high of 200 and some employees with one of his other companies. So we, we feel we have the right team put together to execute and move this company forward for quite a period of time to manage the growth that we anticipate with the launch of a commercial product 
that is disruptive to the industry on how you treat osteoarthritis. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much. Hopefully you'll come back in 50 or 60 days and give us an update. And I wish you nothing but continued success. Thank you. And I look forward to that opportunity on the launch. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or this station.